All right, this will be the quick review sheet number 22 video. Uh, first one here, dividing. Uh, just make sure you show me um, two steps. Um, if you need any extra help, you would. that would be in your chapter three notes. Okay. This also would be chapter three. Now, keep in mind that the way I kind of taught you to do it back when was I taught you to take out that decimal and just do, in this case, 34,562 times 54 and then put that decimal in at the end. Um, so obviously you'd have to have work here. If, you, if your work does not match the answer that you get, so if you get something and then you check in your calculator, get something different, if you just change it on here, it will be incorrect just so you know your work has to match. Same way with this one, like I said, two steps is your work there. Um, this is all from, this is uh, chapter seven, learning target number four of this chapter right now. So hopefully this wasn't too difficult because it's really fresh in your mind. Um, I think you can, anything you need to know there, you can find right in your notes, and I think that you guys all thought that was relatively easy. Uh, don't miss this. I have a lot of people skipping over that bottom one as I've been checking here. It's like, I don't know, because it's like way at the bottom, it, maybe it's easy to overlook. Don't forget about that, because remember, if you miss any part of, a, of one of my boxes here, the whole thing is wrong. Okay, now this one, we're kind of just throwing this one out there. So it's going to count. It's going to count, but, you know, it's something that we haven't learned yet at all. Okay, so we're really kind of testing your ability to really read this, this definition and really understand it. A statistical question is any question for which you expect to get a variety of answers. So if I ask how many cats, like if I went to one student and said how many cats do you have, that would not be a statistical question because if I just ask one person how many cats they have, I'm not going to get a variety of answers. So that's the key word. If you don't know what the word variety means, it means uh, a bunch of different answers. Okay, I expect to get a lot, a bunch of different answers. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys just kind of think about that one and do your best. But you're gonna check the out of these one, two, three, four, five questions. We want to know which one would give you a variety of answers. Okay, um, this next box. This is gonna be chapter seven, learning target number. No, no, no. I'm sorry, chapter six, learning target. I think four, if I remember right. Um, just making a strip diagram. Okay, if you need any extra support there, I think uh, it's in your notes for sure. And then, um, you know, I think you can figure it out because I think you guys were doing really well with this um, towards the end of the chapter, and you all did really well on the test. So, um, yeah, so you, you just got to identify the percentage and, and all that. But for the most part, I think you guys will be fine there. Um, keyword here on this one. I definitely need work on this one. Um, I guess I should have probably put a W on this one too. And then I should probably put the word proportion because you should always check whether proportion. I'm um, going back to here. I'm going to underline something that's very important. It's it, this. Get, this is your fake ratio, obviously. Okay. I want to know how much 16 costs, but the key word here is it says use unit price to prove or to find your answer. Okay. So if you don't use unit price, which remember that's the one where I used to do it like this, where I would draw a squiggly line. I'd have one proportion, figuring out the unit price or the unit rate, and then the other one would be finding whatever it wants to know. Okay, check back to your chapter five notes if you have any issues with that. Okay, um, here every twelfth person entering will get a T-shirt. Okay, now you got to think about what fake ratio that is. Okay, there is a ratio that's happening there. Every twelve means one out of every twelve. But I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go any farther. But that's what that means. One out of every twelve are going to get a free T-shirt. So you got to ask yourself if that's a part or a whole, and then whether that is going to go with the 1 or going to go with the 12. 12. Go on the bottom, okay? So you'll have to figure that one out. And I'm here. This is Chapter 7 stuff, so this is current stuff that we're doing right now. A um, couple keywords here, multiply K by 5. I'm only going to accept that one way, only written one, one specific way. And then the other thing is, is the word subtract obviously is important, but here's really the key word, from. Subtract 4 from the product. Ask yourself, what where what always comes after the word from if you don't know go back and check out your learning target number one notes or video okay um eight less than h that means we're talking eight below where h is so just be real careful on the wording on that one um and then finally the same way here just know that it says divided by and uh I'm, i will not accept this sign so don't do it there's a different way we show division problems number nine or eight Definitely have to have work here. Anytime you subtract mixed numbers or fractions, I need to see common denominators. Okay, 
and then obviously it needs to be in simplest form as usual. Okay. Um, next one, PEMDAS question here. Order of operations, or actually no, it's not. I'm sorry. It's an algebraic expression. So the first step, I'm going to be counting off this week. If you don't have this, I want to. I don't want this to become 30. That's what a lot of people do. They go ahead and do three times 10. That is wrong. You did multiplication before exponents. It's never. That's not right. Sorry. The first step is to always turn that algebraic expression into a numeric. So you would write 3 times 10 plus 3 to the 4th minus 6 divided by 2 times 2. And that's where you start. Now I'm ready to follow PEMDAS. And if you don't do that, it will be wrong. Okay. Uh, same with this one here. I need to see that D becoming 3 before we do anything else. And I don't want you just writing over the top of it. I want you to rewrite it. So 5 parentheses. 3 plus 2 plus 2 parentheses 6 minus 3. Okay, now you'll probably remember this, but remember you must have, you anytime you have an expression in the numerator or the denominator of a fraction, you must do that first. So this one is going to have multiple, multiple steps. There's going to be a, you're probably going to have a, a whole sheet of paper, or at least a half a sheet probably doing this problem. I think I did mine on page 4 when I actually did it my answer key with this space down here below that with those graphs um, and it took up a lot of space but that's the way I want it done okay finally number number 10 I'm just gonna go ahead and underline something this says saved 32 percent of the price keyword there being of okay I'm saving 32 percent of the price so of that and then specifically, I don't want to know how much I saved. I want to know how much did I pay. There is a difference between how much I saved and how much I paid. Okay? That does not say, well, I'll just leave it at that. Okay? Let's go ahead and go to the next page. Okay, we just did these. Okay, this is learning target number uh, six. Okay, distributive property. Okay, you should know how to do that. If you, chapter seven, by the way. So if you need to look, remember that, go ahead and look in your notes. Um, here, this one's kind of a tricky question. Okay, now again, it's the distributive property. So um, you know you need to distribute that through there, but I, I don't want to give you too much away, but you're gonna have to, like on C here, you're gonna have to basically go through there and combine like terms to see if it gives you whatever that equals. Okay, you're gonna have to go through here. Now I will tell you this, whenever you see a negative out front like that, you have to distribute negative through. Now, you're not going to understand why right now, but later you will. You're going to have to distribute both these, but you're going to have to distribute a negative. So like this one's going to become 4n plus 24, obviously, right? 4 times n is 4n, 4 times 6 is 24. But then negative times n, okay, it's really a negative 1 if you want to think about it. But again, I know this is, I don't like this question because we don't teach integers in sixth grade, but yet it was on it was on a practice test so that's why we're getting you ready for it you're always going to do the opposite remember opposites are the positive or the negative form of the number so if I have positive 4 the opposite would be negative 4 if I have negative 10 the opposite would be positive 10 those are opposites of each other well when you have the negative out there you're basically saying the opposite of everything inside so you're going to distribute it okay so that's going to become minus n minus 6 okay and then this one is going to you're going to do the same thing, so it's going to look the same, 4n plus 24. And then when you just go ahead and put that through there, that's going to become the opposite of n, which is negative n. And then that's going to become the opposite of 6, which is positive 6. Okay, from there, you're going to have to combine these like terms, okay, to see which one will actually give you, which one will actually give you the, um, the same expression as whatever that equals. Okay? I hope that makes a little bit of sense. We'll, we'll talk more about it in class when we grade it, but um, you should be able to figure I gave you pretty much most of the work to be able to do it. Okay, here, we've had a couple of these order matters. That's the big thing here. The, what is the ratio of adventure? So it wants to know adventures, books checked out, two, which are two, to humor. So it's adventure to humor. Okay? And then obviously you need to simplify it. Okay? Uh, this one here, once again, I just, I'm going to let you guys think on this one. I'm not going to give it, because I can't really give you too much information. Um, 
Now you know what? H is representing the H is representing the height of the cirrus clouds. Okay, and then it gives you some information about that. So you know what? I'm not going to help you too much on that one because I really want you guys to think. I want to see what you guys know on that one. I mean, it's multiple choice, so I think you guys should be able to narrow it down. Okay. Here I must see a proportion. Here I must see a proportion. If you don't show proportions on those two, they will be wrong. Okay. Um, here's your fake ratio. Okay. There, you can just use that. But that's all the more I'm going to help you on those two. And finally, the last page. Um, uh, you're just going to have to use the information you have here. Um, you can see where it says there are two pine trees planted for every three maple trees planted. There's your fake ratio. Two pines for every three maple. Okay? So, you know the real information is that there are 300 total. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do your edge pieces. So if I know that's two pines for three maples, that would also mean five total. Okay, so this right here is your fake ratio. That's all the more I'm going to help you with on this one. I think from that you'll be able to set up a proportion to figure it out based on your edge pieces and then that they gave you that piece of real information. Okay? All right, so on this one, I would, I would appreciate it if you showed a proportion. All right? All right, guys. Hope that helped. See ya.